Hello and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Mike Jacoby. Delighted to have you with us. With me today, talking to Gene Blameyer, the athletic director of San Jose State University. How are you, my friend? Fantastic. Good to see you. Is that how you pronounce your name, Blameyer? Yes. Because I think you spell it wrong. <laughs> well, thank you. <coughs> Is it a Danish name? No, German. It's a German name. Okay, yeah. yeah. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm sure you spelled it yeah. right. First of all, welcome. We have, uh, we've known each other for a few years since you uh, came down and took over the reins of athletic director down at Spartan Land. Uh, but you're back. You've been to UCLA, Boise State? Yeah, I went to, uh, uh, went to UCLA, grew up in Los Angeles, okay. uh, moved to, to Boise my senior year in high school. Okay. Wow, there's a culture shock. Yeah, it was. Uh, but got a scholarship uh, to UCLA, a, a football scholarship back there in 1971 okay. when Pepper Rogers uh, was, uh, was just coming on board. And uh, so went to UCLA and... and uh, 71, it was Plunkett at Stanford then? He was. Okay. And my brother was at Stanford, okay. uh, a backup quarterback to okay. Plunkett, Bunce, Borello, Wise, and Freitas. <laughs> he, he, he didn't get off that bench very often. <laughs> he didn't get off the bench very often. All five of those guys end up playing yeah. in the NFL. Yeah. So, uh, but my brother was at Stanford. I was at UCLA, early 70s. Wide and, receiver. Uh, Went there as a wide receiver and then ended up uh, moving to tight end. They, they changed the offense, yeah. uh, decided to go with the option. And so I was a light tight end okay. uh, for the Bruins back 71 to 74. Let's talk a little bit about Division One. There is, uh, to the casual fan, they say, well, look at this television contract. Look at all the money Alabama and USC have. Everybody's flush. That ain't the way it is. No, no. The... Uh, the big five conferences, uh, they have the TV money. They oh, I was going to ask, that TV money, which is what, the $4 billion, whatever the deal is, does that go to everybody? No. It doesn't go to Division One. No. Oh. No, no, no. The, the TV deals now are all conference-based. Oh, okay. Based. So the Pac-12, they negotiate with ESPN and CBS and everybody else. Their deal is their deal. The SEC... They have a separate deal. The ACC has a separate deal. So, so but for the playoffs. Well, now. for the playoffs, yeah, the Big Five conferences, Get they the they take eighty eight percent of that money. So yeah, it's a trickle down theory, albeit slowly. Yeah, very very slowly. Uh, they're taking the lion the lion's share of, okay. of the playoff money, but it's the the regular season money, which for the conferences is is even bigger because. Right now, schools in the Big Five, the 65 uh, Big Five schools, they're getting annually anywhere from 22 to to 38 million dollars a year just on television. Wow! And whereas in the Mountain West Conference, you know, we may be getting one million dollars right. a year from our conference uh, <clears throat> distribution. Well, it, it's it's certainly no secret, but there are um, a few years ago you guys played Alabama, and right. people often say, "Well, why would a school like that play that kind of school?" And vice versa. Yeah. But that's you get paid a pretty good stipend to do that. Well, absolutely. They're they're called guarantee games, yeah. and uh, uh, San Jose State. Last year we played at Auburn. Yeah. Uh, this year we're playing at Auburn again. Yeah. And uh, why would you do that? Well. Uh, for a million and a half dollars. That's right. Uh, well, and there's always the possibility. Was it Appala who beat Eastern Michigan or somebody beat Michigan? A Appalachian couple years ago? State Appalachian. beat Michigan, and, uh, and lightning can always strike. Well, absolutely, and and uh, it's a it's a great experience yeah. for our program, for our kids. We we prefer not to sure. uh, have to play guarantee games, and we we're hoping to get to a position soon where where we don't have to schedule those games, but. You know, one of those a year is, is fine. Yeah, yeah. It's, it is a, a, a challenge and an opportunity. And it's non-conference play. Right. It's so. non-conference. It's, it's a great opportunity for, for our players to see a different part of the country and to see uh, and, and test themselves at the highest level. Tell me, uh, give me the 30-second dog and pony show on what an athletic director does, or perhaps it would be faster to say what he doesn't do. <laughs> Well, uh, nowadays, uh, a lot of what we do is fundraising. Yeah. And uh, you, you manage, you know, the, the department. Uh, but a lot of it is working within the university, 
so that you're uh, well connected with the vice presidents and the president's yeah. office, uh, working with alumni, working with donors, and and then compliance, making sure that uh, you know that we're doing things the right way and that we're following the rules. So it's really managing uh, a lot of areas, but uh, a lot of our time is spent. Uh, in the community and on campus and fundraising. Well, and there is a, the responsibility is, uh, is twofold. One, of trying to put a great team or a good competitive team on the field. But the, the larger issue there is uh, ultimately putting a lot of college graduates on the street, which I know that you're dedicated to. Because right. what's the percentage of uh, college guys that go on to pro? It's, Goofy oh, it's, uh, yeah, it's one or two percent yeah. uh, at the most. So uh, our student athletes are are at the university first and foremost uh, to graduate, yeah. and and we want to make sure that they have that opportunity. Yeah. And that's one of our core values is is to uh, stress academics and to see that uh, that they do graduate. Now you were at Boise State during, and I'll probably come back, but what we would call the glory years up there that had this great run. Um, but you came from a place where the competition for entertainment dollar was not nearly as severe as down here. Right. I mean, there was football, and what else are we going to do? Right. And, and I have been, I've been up there in games and the best tailgate parties in the world up there. What a, what a great place. And if uh, folks are college football fans, you know Boise State from the uh, Smurf field. Right. The blue field, and how did you get away with that, and how do you keep it? Well, there's there's nothing. Oh, I thought there was a change. They no, changed there's, the there's no rule. Okay. There's no rule against it. Uh, Boise State now owns the the trademark for that, yeah. so uh, it, it can limit other schools from doing it. But there there's no rule okay. against uh, the color of of your field. Okay. How about the inflation on football? Is that is there a rule on that in college? Uh, there isn't a rule on that in no. college. No, there is. And, uh, Depends who you ask. <laughs> <I guess. laughs> well, but, but talking about the competitive dollar, boy, that's got to be a, a, a daunting job down here. While you have a huge alumni uh, in the South Bay, in Silicon right. Valley, it's, it's tough to get people to come out. Well, it is. And, and you know... A lot of that's on us. We need to put a product on the field that, that you know, is attractive and, and, and warrants that attention. And that, over the years, has been a challenge. But even years that you had a better product, let's say, on the field, it's still a tough attendance. It's just, it, it's a tough nut to crack. Well, it is, but I, I really think uh, we can use that to our advantage. Sure. What, what we have here in the Bay Area, in my opinion, are sports fans. Yeah. And sports fans, let's face it, are fickle. Yeah. And they're going to go where there's a winner. And here you have choices. So if, if the winner is not at Santa Clara, then they'll, they'll look someplace else. Maybe it's at Stanford. If it's not at Stanford, they'll look at Cal or they'll look at San Jose State. Um, so they're fickle. Uh, if, if we win, you know, I think they will come. Yeah. Uh, what we've got to do is, is have success because people do have choices. But what there are here are a lot of sports fans. Yeah. And that's a good thing. And uh, I don't think having professional sports uh, is a detriment to what we're doing. I think it, it can be an enhancement. <laughs> we have to be a player. Well, certainly in comparison to the kind of dough you could drop going to a 49er game. Well, uh, yeah. And uh, I mean, it's, uh, San Jose State is a great value to see Division I football and, and, right. and, and solid teams. Yeah, absolutely. The Mountain West is, is a great conference for us to be in, yeah. a very competitive conference. And you know, we do have access to the, the playoff. Yeah. which uh, was very important. Uh, the challenges that, that face all of us now are the changing landscape mm -hmm. in, in college sports. And the legal cases, you know, are, uh, are numerous right now. And uh, the most recent change has been the cost of attendance. So for the first time in over 50 years, the value of a scholarship for a college student has now increased significantly. For 50 years, a scholarship used to be defined as tuition, fees, room, board, and books. Which we call a full ride meal. That's a full ride. Now, it's all of those things plus what's called cost of attendance. And that's a number that every school uh, calculates based on a federal formula that is put in, a, in the campus catalog, in the university catalog, 
that really uh, accounts for miscellaneous expenses so that parents can estimate what is it really going to cost for me to send my, my child yeah. to, to school. And so that's travel expenses to and from, that's laundry money, that's uh, money for, for entertainment on the weekends. Now, at San Jose State, that number is $3,700 per student. So this year, so that's added on to the scholarships. That's so added on to the scholarships. So this year, starting uh, in two weeks, the scholarship that that we gave last year, compared to the scholarship we're giving this year, is at a minimum thirty seven hundred dollars more. That doesn't account for the increased cost of room right. and board. So actually, the difference from last year to this year is going to be even more significant. It's going to be closer to four thousand dollars. Our net uh, result to our budget is over a million dollars of, of increased costs this year. The good news is, the good part of that is that money is going to the students. But is there a scholarship cap, if you will, or is it done by numbers of scholarships? Well, both. There's okay. uh, numbers of scholarships. So football, you can give 85 scholarships. Okay. So the cap is 85. Okay. Now, But you can't necessarily do 85 with the added... Well, uh, some schools, yeah, yeah, some schools may not be able to do yeah. 85, uh, but the pr the pressure because the Big Five schools have said, "Hey, we're going to do this now," and the rest of you can decide whether you want to do it or not. But it's now legal. Uh, but what that's done for all of us in Division One has increased our costs significantly, and it's a challenge that okay, that's just one more thing that we need to go out and raise money for. And, uh, and to try to cover in order to stay competitive with our peers. We're chatting with Gene Blameyer, uh, the athletic director for San Jose State University. You're watching Talk of the Town. Take a little break and be right back. Hi, Michael Jacoby here, executive producer of Jazz on the Plaza, a production of Los Gatos Music and Arts. You know, people often ask me how can they help support us and in doing so help keep jazz alive. Well, a couple of ways. One, you could get a corporation and give us a half million dollars. Now, that was worth a shot. Or two, you could buy some reserved seats. You buy some of the merchandise. And this year, with our tribute to Frank Sinatra, there's some wonderful fedora logoed wine glasses along with shirts. And best of all, you could either check out the gala with the four freshmen or buy a jazz card. Now, the jazz card is just $100, a mere C note, and there's $700 worth of value on it. All right. You give me one minute and these glasses, and I'll tell you exactly what you get. All right, start the clock. Go to Willow Street. It's good for one free pizza and a side salad. Go to Main Street Burgers. Good for a free burger, fries, and soda. Nothing but cakes. Good for buntinis. Go to Verge, the new restaurant, the Toll House, and get a free breakfast entree. Los Gatos Roasting Company. Free breakfast crepe and a large coffee. You can even get a horseback riding lesson at Bright Ranch in San Martin. Go to Rootstock, a sampler appetizer plate. At Skin Spirit, the new folks in town, it's good for one skin rejuvenating chemical peel. Jazz on the Plaza, a couple of VIP entries. Billy's Boston Chowder House, good for a free Boston Chapino lunch. Classic car wash, a classic car wash. What else? Arthur Murray, one free dance lesson. Chentanove, good for a free tiramisu. The Cats, a half a rack of ribs with a side. Chin Chin, free truffle fries. Gardino's good for a free appetizer. And finally, Testarossa Winery, it gets you two passes for wine tasting and a couple of invites to an artesian wine cheese experience. $700 for just a $100 investment. Now it's your chance to help keep jazz alive and help the good folks at Los Gatos Music and Arts keep on keeping on. Come on. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. I'm Mike Jacoby with Gene Blameyer, Left Lake Director of San Jose State University. What's your biggest day-to-day -day challenge fundraising? Uh, yeah, it, it really is. Uh, because everything that we want to do uh, to improve, uh, for the most part, is going to come back to uh, dollars and cents, whether it's adding an academic person to help, if it's adding a, a, uh, an administrator or a coach, or improving a facility. It, it comes back to, okay, who's, how are we gonna pay for that? And uh, we, we've got a 
be able to, to generate that money uh, to do the things that we want to do to, to keep pace. You know, fundraising has evolved, actually de-evolved as far as I'm concerned, over the years in terms of the local people used to support local programs. And, you know, because I do a lot of fundraising for the jazz program. And, but, you know, all of a sudden people go, well, we've got a brand here. We'd rather spend our money in Central Europe. And it's hard to get money, and I'm sure, I'm sure you're seeing this, when you say Silicon Valley is nothing but dough. It's, it's not as easy as one would expect. Right, right. Well, there's no question. And, and, you know, San Jose State, historically, as a state institution, there is that perception that, well, you don't need to fundraise because you're the state. Right. takes care of you but that that is not the case yeah. uh, at all and and especially when it comes to athletics so uh, in order for us uh, to continue to compete at the division one level it's on us to, to generate that revenue and, and to fundraise uh, to make that happen uh, let's address the gorilla in the room with the NCAA and then with pro football as well is uh, particularly with junior say going into the Hall of Fame um, this concussion issue you've seen You've seen it go, well, not full circle, but you've seen it move quite along. <clears throat> no, quite question. along. no question. No it, question. It's a, it's a serious. Now, issue. when you were playing, you're, you're back in the game, right? Well, yeah, yeah. As soon as you could count, <laughs> count the fingers. He's close uh, enough. You, you, Two, you yeah, got it. <laughs> that's right. You get back in. Uh, but obviously, uh, everybody's more aware of, uh, of of the dangers. I, I mean, the the. Athletes today are bigger, they're stronger, they're faster, uh, the hits are, are more severe, and, uh, and the equipment is, uh, is different. And, and the helmets... Now, are there strides being made in equipment? Because I know the, I mean, NASCAR, the big move, you know, after Earnhardt died, is that, that somebody says, well, you know, we can do this. And it's amazing, the difference yeah. it makes. No. Is there a helmet on the horizon? Well, I believe so. There, there's a lot of research dollars being committed now. Uh, to the concussion issue, and uh, the equipment definitely will change uh, as we move forward. It's it's going to have to, or, or else we're not going to have football. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's gotten the attention now uh, that that is warranted, and I, I think you'll see more and more changes as we go forward. In addition to addressing that more uh, more prominently. Um, Healthcare for student athletes. It's the thing that NCAA, I would think, in your mind as well, has to look into. I mean, when they leave, when they leave school. Yeah, and there's uh, there, they've now uh, relaxed some of the rules in, in that regard, to where schools can uh, do more for a student athlete. Uh, student athletes are able to buy insurance uh, if if they think they have a professional career ahead of them. And, uh, and schools now can... Well, in the career they had behind them, too. There may be some value in the medical insurance. Right, yeah, right. So, so uh, yeah, that's been relaxed. Yeah. Uh, and, and so more and more benefits are being uh, provided for our, our student-athletes, and, and obviously that's, that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, the SEC ruling, um, which, which I thought was pretty dramatic about the misconduct, um, where that they can't transfer now within the conference with all the, the sexual abuse cases and if there's a serious misconduct you can't go from Alabama to Auburn that you're out which I would think is a great step in the right direction right well there and there have been conferences for decades have had uh, restrictions on being able to transfer yeah. within the conference whether it's just for an athletic purpose or for another reason uh, now Conferences are free to to uh, regulate that more or relax that, but the right. SEC obviously is, is tightening that up. Well, yeah, it seems as I say, a step in the right direction. The uh, I mean, if you're not going to even I mean, if you're not going to get drafted, if you do something like that, people will think twice. You would hope. Right. Um, talk to me about what after a few years, what um, what's still a thrill for you in this business. Uh, uh, the challenge of, uh, of improving, uh, you know, a, a program, uh, helping student athletes and uh, watching students come in as 17 year olds and, and leave as, as 21 or 22 year olds and, and really grow and mature, uh, providing opportunities for as many students as we can 
and uh, just the challenge of, of uh, trying to create successful programs, find the right people, uh, get the right chemistry going, and providing opportunities for students to be successful. Now, going, um, obviously, uh, uh, you deal with a lot of athletic directors. Uh, uh, your personal style, is that developed, uh, obviously, over the years, but also you learn from other athletic directors and you go, that might be the way to do it, or we're going we're gonna to tweak it this way? Well, sure. We're... Uh, I, uh, and maybe it's not the way to do it as well. Right. No, you can learn. Uh, you can learn a lot. I, I think very few of us come up with original ideas. You know, we're, yeah, we're always no stealing. We're, yeah. we're stealing them from uh, from others. But uh, it, we share information, and uh, you usually have, you know, a handful of, of friends and colleagues uh, in the industry that that you can call when you have a situation that that you you're not sure how to handle. Yeah. Uh, it's always good to get advice, and uh, because the odds are somebody has encountered uh, the situation or something uh, close to it uh, at, at their institution, and uh, the more we can help each other solve those problems, the the better. Uh, outside of property values and dramatic views, what's the biggest difference from Boise? Uh, you know, there there aren't a lot of differences. It's the same issues uh, you're dealing with. With coaches, you're dealing with student athletes, you're dealing with donors. Uh, <clears throat> the biggest difference here is is uh, we don't have the resources uh, financially uh, yet to to really do the things that uh, all the things that we'd like to do. That can come, you know, and and uh, it it didn't happen overnight I know it at, at yeah. Boise yeah. State. Uh, it took it took a long time uh, to get that. Uh, uh, everything lining up in, in the right direction, but uh, you know I, I think it's it's changing a culture here, getting more people involved, uh, getting them to understand what our needs are, uh, because uh, most people uh, are all about helping students sure, and, sure. and giving them opportunities, and you know what we got to make sure is that we're doing it the right way, uh, that our students are going to class that they are taking advantage of that opportunity to, to get that education and and then uh, continue to try to excel athletically. We I, we're, I think we're okay time-wise, we're another 10 minutes or so. We were uh, talking uh, off camera about some of the projects you guys are doing right now. Kind of give me an overview of that. I know you're still working on the Bill Walsh uh, yep. structure. Well, we have a, a whole South Campus master plan uh, that we've put together at uh, San Jose State. And, and we need to renovate uh, several of our facilities. Uh, the first one that, that uh, we're looking to work on is a, is a new golf practice facility with... Uh, yeah, Kennedy showed me the layouts of that, and it's really terrific. It, it'll be state-of-the-art. It'll be as nice as any in the country. Yeah. And uh, we're hoping to be able to break ground on that next spring. Good. And uh, when we do that, then we're going to need to uh, relocate uh, our softball complex, baseball field, tennis courts and, and soccer field. Yeah. And so it, it's going to be the first domino to fall. Uh, and But the exciting thing is it's going it, it, to have four other facilities. I could just see pitching and, the donor and going, oh, this is a great golf facility. What are you going to do with the baseball? Oh, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> and then we're, oh, yeah, what are we going to do? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it, it, we, we've got a, there is an urgency uh, to, to make all this happen. And, and we certainly have a need. Uh, our facilities have, have not kept pace <clears throat> with the with our competitors over the last three or four decades, and it's really now time for us to address those. Yeah. And we're going to have to bite the bullet and uh, and do some things that, that are going to be tough to do. Uh, but we're working on these facilities, which is exciting. Uh, we're bringing back men's water polo. Cool. Uh, starting next month. Yeah. And uh, that's exciting. Uh, you know, we had one of the top programs sure. in the country uh, for, for years. And uh, we haven't had water polo for 35 years. Uh, but it's coming back. Our, uh, our, our openers against Santa Clara okay. on uh, it's one of the great Saturday, yeah. September 5th, uh, on campus at, uh, at the pool complex. So we'd like to welcome and encourage everybody to come on out Labor Day weekend and, and catch some water polo. 
I've always felt that for water polo, the fan should sit, there, should sit below the surface, oh, yeah. looking through yeah. glass. And you want to see what a yeah. tough game that is. Yeah, oh, it's, it's, uh, there's a lot going on uh, beneath the surface yeah. that, that we don't see. Yeah. Uh, it's a great sport, though, and, and uh, the Bay Area, of course, has had a great history in water polo, and, and San Jose State has been a big part of that. Yeah. Uh, we talked a little bit about coaching. Uh, Ron Carricker is an old buddy of mine. Um, good coach. And uh, great with the with with the players, and yeah. you know he's had to, to go through the learning process and uh, the tough years. Yeah. I mean, a couple of years ago, I think it, it was a total of what nine or twelve points. That right. There were four losses, yeah. so it was amazing. Yeah, no, we're close, and uh, this is uh, Ron's third year, and so he's starting to get his players in and, and his so, system. So from a coaching standpoint, third and fourth year is when you start to, to deal with uh, uh, the people that, that, that you went out and recruited. Right, right, definitely. Uh, the first year, you know, you don't really have any of your own, your own players. The second year, your players are freshmen, so they're probably not going to uh, be seeing that much action. So it's really... Uh, Three, four, five years uh, to get your own get your own folks in there, and, and to get your staff settled uh, is is always a, a work in progress. That having been said, short of a national championship, what what are you guessing this year? <laughs> right now, you're tied. That's right. That's right. Uh, we're all zero zero. Uh, we're looking forward to this year, yeah. Mike. I mean, uh, we have a very uh, a very challenging schedule. Yeah. Uh, but that's a great opportunity, too. And, and the one thing about uh, Coach Carragher and our team is uh, they don't complain. They haven't backed down, uh, whether we have to go play at Auburn or go play you know, at Minnesota or Oregon State or no matter where we're going, uh, they're going to strap it on and, and go out there and represent the institution uh, in a very positive manner. Uh, we're looking forward to this year. I think it's going to be very positive. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what. Um... Gene, we've uh, we're talking to Los Gatos now. Trust me, Los Gatos has a couple of bucks. So if people were interested, either as alumni or maybe interested in uh, becoming a donor, how do they go about it? Just uh, just call me at home. I'll come by and get the money. Uh, our <laughs> webpage yeah. is sjsuspartans.com, and uh, there's information on there. You can call uh, call the athletic ticket office, call uh, John Poach, okay. uh, or myself, uh, and and just uh, let us know. But we have numerous opportunities uh, to get involved and to really help. And I'm assuming you're about to break, uh, I ticket sales are probably up and running now. But the, oh, yeah. And you got a lot of different T plans. Tickets. You can do season tickets. You do a lot of uh, Oh, yeah. Lot of yeah, we have season tickets on sale and individual game tickets are on sale right now. We have group ticket prices. We have youth prices. Uh, we've got great opportunities in, in every ticket category you could imagine. So uh, our, our ticket office is open eight to five every day, and uh, we'd welcome your, your call. Gene Blameyer, go Spartans. Thank you Thanks, for being Mike. here, my friend, and best have a great season. That's Talk of the Town for this week. Next week, join me as an old friend of mine, Rich Kelly, who played in the NBA for 10 or 12 years, is now a venture capitalist, and we'll talk a little bit about what happens after the cheering ends. Please join us. I'm Mike Jacoby. I'll see you soon.